Hi, my name is Cold Beer, and let's start with Apocalypse Party, a very nice action roguelite which is also the sponsor of this whole video. I was playing it for a few days now and I can honestly admit that I had tons of fun, and for this great prize you can enjoy this awesome game as well. Basically here you take control of the hero and start slashing, dicing, burning, freezing and shooting hordes of zombies and other undead. The more you slay, the more powerful you get and you can slay even more. The fight is refreshing and fun and you can play with up to 3 friends. Co-op is supported and is immensely fun. Also, controls are very responsive and the skills are fun to use. You can also get various gadgets and devices to help you. Like this toilet. <laughs> toilet that kills enemies for you. How cool is that? Very cool. Indeed, of course, it's not the only thing. You can obtain explosives, Molotov cocktails, you can summon tiny pirates and many other awesome and crazy things. Like a potato salad? Maybe it's for you to explore. After several playthroughs, I decided that I like many approach the most, because this playstyle reminded me of cow level of Diablo 2. That is never a bad thing. You gather sounds of zombies and slice through the ball of the undead like a boss. And if you have friends, that experience can be enhanced many times. Slashing in a good company of heroes is the experience you would rarely get in other roguelite games, so this is quite an original approach. Grab your mother-in-law and conquer these zombie-infested kingdoms together. Also, after every run you will unlock many cool features and new heroes. There are plenty of options for everyone. And if you get the game now, you will also obtain free DLC. It's the largest update with new map chapters and new infinite dungeon game mode. You can play the mode solo or with your friends and climb the ranks to leave your mark on the online leaderboard. Wolheim most of us can remember the hype it caused on release date. And the hype is well deserved, this game is really a masterpiece with a review score, never, at least on Steam, never below 90%. It may scare you that the game is still in early access after all those years, but if you focus on the main objectives only, it will still provide you with more than 70 hours of gameplay. And in general, Wallheim is a brutal exploration and survival game for 1 to 10 players, set in a procedurally generated world inspired by Norse mythology. You will craft powerful weapons, construct longhouses, grow your balls and slay mighty foes to prove yourself to Odin. Mutant Year Zero – Road to Eden this is a tactical game that combines the turn-based combat of XCOM with real-time stealth and exploration of post-human world reclaimed by nature. And mutants. And by saying mutants, I don't mean human mutants. Those are all gone. Now smart animals rule the world. Uh, define smart. Well, you got me here. They are not always smart. They sometimes do stupid decisions because, you know, you are controlling them. Oh my god, how dare you? Shh, it's a joke. So, although animals can't speak here, it's definitely not a Disney kind of world. It's brutal and cruel and survival of the fittest is in progress. Here you must venture out of the city to explore the zone where one day you might find the Eden of Legends, the ancient heaven in the middle of hell. I guess with mountains of potato salad and rivers of cold beer. Maybe you will find your answers there. Then again, maybe not. Game has really beautiful graphics, great humor and an interesting story. Also very positive reviews on Steam. Thymesia this is a dark fantasy action RPG with fast-paced combat and an interesting plague weapon system. In a kingdom where death rules, you will play as a mysterious character known by the codename Corvus. And as always, you are the kingdom's final hope, blah blah, the fate of the land is resting in your hands, and so on. You know, also it's a short game. It is possible to beat it in 6 hours, but hey, let's be fair and square and triangle. It ain't gonna happen unless you are a god of gamepad. Also, if you like tea with times, then you are strong and this game needs you. Wasteland 3 – Colorado Collection I will say bluntly, if you like tactical turn-based games, this RPG here is a must-play. It's not a recommendation or something, but the law. You must play it if you want to go, you know, to game hell after your death. Anyway, this version of the game includes both the Battle of Steel Town and Cult of the Holy Detonation expansions, as well as the Colorado Survival Gear bonus items. And the game itself is a wonderful gem for all Fallout, Baldur's Gate and all turn-based combat fans. In Wasteland 3, you will travel to the frozen wastes of Colorado to deal with gangs, cults and psychopathic clowns in effort to bring stability to the wastes. Or, you know, as always, even more chaos and even more psychopathic clowns. Yeah, not like in real life, your decisions really matter and the world will change according to your actions and reactions. The Evil Within 2 
You will play as Detective Sebastian Castellanos who has lost everything. Well, that is written in the game's description, but I honestly hope that he didn't lose his ding dong. You know, that would suck. So anyway, you were given a chance to save your daughter and have to descend into the nightmarish world. Horrifying threats emerge from every corner as the world twists and wraps around you. You can craft traps, sneak, run and hide or try to battle the horrors with limited ammo. Sounds familiar, right? Yep, if you are a fan of Resident Evil, the second part of the Evil Within will hit you straight into your feelings. It's a really great game with more than 90% of positive review score. Vanishing of Ethan Carter the game surprised me by not having any UI, no information bar or anything like that. And that's a good thing because it doesn't need one anyway. The vanishing of Ethan Carter is very detailed and the praise this game received for its graphics is very much deserved. You may call the game a walking simulator, but it's more like a detective story that you have to unfold by, you know, walking around. You'll slowly reveal clues that allow you to piece the events of this Lovecraftian mystery together. Yeah, the game may sometimes be really creepy, but that adds to the immersion. Main story is constructed from several smaller stories and once you collect all the clues the game rewards you with an interesting and unexpected conclusion. Like really, if you are expecting some simple murder mystery here, it's nothing like that. So basically if you like slow paced beautiful games with the ability to surprise you, this is one of the best choices you can make. Stasis Bone Totem Perhaps I should start with the fact that the game has an overwhelmingly positive review score on Steam. That is always a great sign. You will take control of Mac and Charlie, a husband and wife duo who make their living by searching the ocean for salvage. But when you stumble upon an abandoned oil rig in the Pacific Ocean, you uncover a horrific secret, and the evil corporation behind it will do anything to keep it hidden. As you embark on your adventure, you will encounter an immersive narrative filled with spine-tingling horror and unexpected twists. Stasis Bone Totem, despite being a psychological horror game, is kinda relaxing because of the point-and-click nature and an interesting puzzles to solve. Kingdoms of Amalur – Re-Reckoning the game was released in 2012, but 10 years later it was remastered and sold, you know the drill, as a new game with a price of a new game. Everyone was raging, but now it's not a problem anymore. On various sales you can get it with 60 or 70% discount. The game itself is designed by the Elder Scrolls Oblivion lead designer Ken Ralston and set in a world with a lore of 10,000 years of fiction created by New York Times bestselling author R. A. Salvatore, or however his name is pronounced, I don't know him, but he's obviously very good. So so this is a huge open world game, although be warned that some players sometimes encounter game breaking bugs. I literally read that in a comment that was written a few months ago. It's not old news or something, keeping the age of the game in mind. Anyway, the game itself is really good, so you may want to risk it. Dome Keeper. The discount is not very high, but the game is very affordable anyway, people behind the project are not greedy. Domekeeper has about 90% of positive reviews, so it is obviously a hidden gem you may want to try. Well, a nice polished rock at least. This is a roguelike survival miner where you will defend your dome from wave after wave of monsters. You will use the time between each attack to dig beneath the surface and search of valuable resources and artifacts, and use them carefully to choose powerful upgrades and bonuses. People on Steam are talking that the game is very polished, rich and imaginative. It's all you need for your free time. Well, this and potato salad. Thronebreaker – The Witcher Tales this is a single-player RPG set in the world of The Witcher that combines narrative-driven exploration with unique puzzles and card battle mechanics. Well, some sort of a mishmash of different things, but so is Potato Salad, so expect the best. The game spins a truly regal tale of Meave, a war veteran and queen of two northern realms, Lyria and Rivia. Facing an imminent invasion from Nilfgaard, she is forced once again to enter the warpath and set out on a dark journey of destruction and revenge. Well, honestly, if Nilfgaard Nilfgaard changed the N in this name to M, they can invade anyone anytime they want. Just saying, nobody would resist. People are saying that the writing here is amazing, although the game itself is so unusual that sometimes it may be hard to really get into the gameplay. But don't let that discourage you, the review score is over the roof and most players who bought the game are recommending it for you. And so do I. Show those Nilfgaardians who's the boss. 
Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. This is a massive, challenging action RPG that drops you into a vast open world full of interesting characters and creatures. The game is made by Capcom, a Japanese company, but the whole setting of Dragon's Dogma is European. So you may think maybe because of that this game features some ridiculous moments, but Capcom was really serious about the job. They went all around Europe to actually get a lot of information, especially for the backgrounds and environments in the Dragon's Dogma. They looked at architecture and buildings and things of that nature and also just natural environments as well. Also took many pictures and tried to recreate those as closely as possible. Well, a bunch of Japanese people in Europe taking pictures? Who could have thought? Anyway, developers actually did a lot of research in Europe that helped to recreate stuff in-game, and that level of dedication is truly admirable. Dragon's Dogma has more strategy and more dynamic fights than usual action RPG games. You know, you can climb monsters here, and that is super cool. Also, it's a tougher game in general. But if you like to explore the open world and love fantasy games, you, you can't ignore it. Gamers are talking that this is an underrated gem and is a must-play for every open-world RPG fan. Grim Dawn among all the games similar to Diablo, there is no doubt that Grim Dawn is one of the best examples ever made in this field. More than 90% of positive reviews can confirm that with ease. You will be able to enjoy the dual class system. Combine any of six distinct classes with over 25 skills and modifiers per class, meaning that your hero will definitely be some kind of unique abomination nobody else has. Although I can say from my own experience, if you are playing for the first time, don't do that. Swallow your dignity and just watch some tutorial of the most powerful full build possible, because otherwise you may end like me. You will nurture a warrior who does cool magic but later in the game is completely useless, and that drop of quality is huge, from a Gandalf to a Las Vegas magician. I will tell Pen Gillette about this blasphemy, he will make you disappear. Oh, no, 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 please don't. It's too late for that. Detroit, become human. Your decisions will dramatically alter how the game's intense, branching narrative plays out. Your choices really matter, not like in real life. Basically, the whole game is built around your choices. You can't do anything here except to choose what to do in certain situations. Well, also you move around a little and search for clues, but that's kinda it. And every decision you make, no matter how small, affects the outcome of the story. And in this game, no playthrough will be exactly the same. You can replay again and again to discover a totally different conclusion, sometimes absolutely absolutely unexpected one. Well, let's be honest, you probably won't do that many times, but it's nice to know that the ending you got is really unique. Also, you can try the free demo version on Steam. Pentiment this game looks kinda dumb, but it's made by Obsidian Entertainment. Yeah, the same guys behind Pillars of Eternity, Fallout New Vegas, The Outer Worlds, and many others. What are the others? Oh, shut up! This is a narrative-driven historical game focusing on character development, with heavily stylized art and choice-driven storytelling in early 16th century Bavaria. You will play as Andreas Moller, a clever illustrator caught up in a series of murders in a secluded abbey over the course of 25 years. You will be responsible for conducting your own investigation to the the fate of the community, but each decision will have lasting consequences and draws you closer to the center of underlying conspiracy. People on Steam are saying that the writing is top quality, art style is amazing and animations are great. And yeah, the game has an overwhelmingly positive review score as well. Jagged Alliance 3 in the sequel of the legendary tactical strategy turn-based franchise, you can select from a huge cast of mercenaries, all with their own unique personalities, quirks and backstories. Then go out and explore the land as you meet new people, earn money, grow your team and ultimately make your own decisions that will decide the country's fate. Here you will also find a campaign that you can play alone or with friends in online co-op mode. Control territory, train the locals, command multiple parties and defend against enemy forces in an alive and active world. You can customize customize your weaponry and even decide on the fate of the country in an open RPG structure. Honestly, I was really skeptical about the game's quality before the release, because sequels like that, especially after so many years, tend to flop, while most of them actually fail to live up to the expectations. And Jagged Alliance 3 wasn't anything like that. A very positive review score left by thousands of people proves that without a sweat. Remnant 2 this is the sequel to Remnant from the Ashes, best known as Dark Souls with guns. The game pits survivors of humanity against new deadly creatures and godlike bosses across beautiful but menacing worlds. Here you can travel alone or with friends as a team and explore strange new worlds and beyond, overrun by mythical creatures while trying to stay alive. There are multiple worlds to explore with different types of creatures, weapons and items. Game has branching quest lines, augments, crafting and loot rewards that will test the results 
12 of even the most hardened players in dynamically generated dungeons and areas. Most of the players are saying that the second part is better than the first one, meaning that developers learned from their past mistakes and made an actually awesome game. Merchant of the Skies here you will become a captain of a trading airship. All you have to do is to get rich and embark on many adventures in the process. Overall, this is a sandbox trading game with light base building and tycoon elements. You start as a captain of a small cloud ship and work your way towards establishing your own trade company. Game incorporates exploration, base building, trading and some minor RPG elements as well. Yeah, you will get experience and become more savvy when it comes to trading, then start your own goods production. And as an experienced cloud tycoon, Tycoon, you will establish trade routes to move and sell goods without your direct involvement. And you know, get rich and build your own mansion from more than 200 different building blocks. People are saying that this is a very nice chill game suitable for everyone who just want to relax after a hard work day. The Wolf Among Us this is a gritty, violent and mature thriller based on the award-winning Fables comic books. You'll discover that a brutal, bloody murder is just a beginning where every decision can have enormous consequences. And it's not only what you choose to do will affect your story, but when you choose to do it as well. You don't need to know anything about the comics this game is based on, because events in this story are set before the events seen in the first book. And this game gives you an option to beat up practically anyone you don't like. Sadly, you can't import that energy-sucking co-worker of yours in this game, but hey, you can beat him up in real life instead. I mean, if you are stronger than him. If not, just smile and blame your genes. Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition this game reminds me of Witcher, but for a younger or, you know, less brutal audience. Because it has somewhat similar battle mechanics, open world full of monsters, many dialogues, third-person view and so on. But here you will not find any gore, twisted creepy quests, splattering blood fountains or any nudity. Redhead will never show what she is hiding, here you will get no love affairs, no hot scenes by the waterfall, just robot dinosaurs and indigenous people. I played about 30 hours of this game a few years ago on my PlayStation. I had a great time, but I never finished it because I encountered a difficulty spike and I couldn't play anymore without loading a save game that was an hour ago. And I had no intention to do that. So be careful of the places named the cauldron. Make sure your character level is appropriate before entering inside. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order this is one of my favorite games I have ever played. Yeah, I am a fan of Star Wars, and my whole childhood I dreamed of becoming a... Sith. <laughs> so I could teach people I don't like a lesson. A lesson of... From all Souls-like games, Fallen Order had the most satisfying combat I've seen since the times of the third Witcher. And I probably liked it so much because it reminded me of those sword dances I did as a Geralt. The game started slow, but the more I played, the more powerful I got. You know, skills like running on walls or throwing spinning lightsaber into a bunch of puny enemies are not given to you all at once. At the beginning you suck as a Jedi, even some random rat can kill you if you are not careful enough. So I died a lot. But later, later I became a real combat god because I discovered a story mode difficulty. Yeah, this is a Souls-like game even noobs like me can enjoy. Hades 98% of positive reviews left by hundreds of thousands of people is the best proof that Hades is a masterpiece. This is a godlike, roguelike dungeon crawler that combines the best aspects of action RPG games and is a wonderful storyteller. As the immortal prince of the underworld, you wield powers and mythic weapons of Olympus to break free from the clutches of the god of the dead himself. You must grow strong and unravel more of the story with each unique escape attempt. Yeah, each attempt. That kinda sums up this game where you will be dying all the time. But dying is a part of Hades, it's not something you should be afraid of. And people on Steam are saying, well, it doesn't matter what they say. It's a masterpiece, they are all praising the game and saying that it is the best ever. Just like potato salad. Mind Scanners. This is a retro-futuristic psychiatry simulation in which you diagnose the citizens of a dystopian metropolis. You locate a host of weird characters and use arcade-style treatment devices to help them. Manage your time and resources to keep the structure in balance. And remember, you take full responsibility for your patients. If you ever played and liked the game called Papers, Please, this may be your spoon of potato salad, and vice versa. Mind Scanners is definitely not for everyone, but a very popular positive review score on Steam is a good indicator that the game is good. Depending if you like the game or not, you may spend from 1 to roughly 10 hours playing it. Titan Station 
This is a retro sci-fi adventure that takes us far into the future, in the year of 1999. Yeah, the retro future is in the past, but somehow we have all these wonderful things we managed to achieve with the technology of the past. A really cool genre reminding us of all these science fiction novels we have read in our teens. So here you are, a systems operator, casual worker of the space station. But after arriving, your mundane work turns into a struggle for your very life as you make a shocking discovery. You have to believe me here, because this is not a channel of spoilers most of the time. Well, half of the time. Still, that counts. Subscribe. Anyway, the station is connected to Saturn's moon Titan by an elevator and pipeline system. Really cool concept. Here you won't find any combat and the game itself will take about 4 hours to complete. If you liked games like The Invincible, Outer Wilds or Observation, Titan Station is your spoon of potato salad. More than 90% of reviews on Steam are positive. 8-bit hordes. Basically, this is a Warcraft 3 if it would be made using the Minecraft engine. Here you'll find two factions, the Dark Orcs and their undead friends versus those annoying humans, dwarves, elves and all that puny stuff in general. You'll collect resources, build up and defend your base, amass your army of evil or, you know, pathetic good and ultimately crush your opponents. Game offers 24 offline campaign missions, 12 co-op missions to play with your mother-in-law and 10 multiplayer maps that support up to 8 trolls online. Literally and figuratively. AI is present as well. It has multiple difficulty options, also it can play in a team with you or destroy you. Game is easy to understand and is really user-friendly. If you like RTS games, there is no doubt that you may like this one as well. Hogwarts Legacy I had a lot of fun playing this game, although I bought it with the idea of playing it a bit, making a review to my channel and forgetting about it. Well, turns have tabled while I played it. It was so much fun to explore the land and meet various characters, I refused to convert it into a job. So I just played the game for my own pleasure and completely skipped it on my channel. All in all, Hogwarts Legacy was one of the few games that actually survived the hype train and never crashed anywhere. The game has above 90% of positive reviews on Steam and I would give the game 10 cold beers out of 10 without much thinking. The world is very detailed, quests are handcrafted and fun, magic truly feels like magic and the world is really open. Although the map is shaped like a bow, very narrow and long. But that's maybe a thing of a lore, I don't know, I have never read the books, only seen the movies. Only thing that actually spoiled the game a bit was how soon I got the ability to fly. That absolutely crashed the exploration on footpath. Flying in Hogwarts is awesome, but I would have given this ability way later in the game. The variety of enemies all also could be wider, but hey, it's a great game, you have all my recommendations. Nia Automata I usually don't feature anime-like titles in my channel, because here all the men look like women and all the women look like 12-year-olds. That is some weird fetish I don't share with anyone. But this is an exceptionally good game and I can't ignore it. So the game tells the story of three androids and their battle to reclaim the machine-driven dystopia overrun by powerful automatons. Here humanity has been driven from Earth by mechanical beings from another world. In a final effort to take back the planet, the human resistance sends a force of androids Android soldiers to destroy the invaders, and you are in control of them. The combat here is beyond fluid. You can change between ranged and melee, perform high-speed battle actions and so on. Also it has 26 endings. If you are into that stuff, you can replay the game almost indefinitely till you get them all. That's if you are some kind of a masochist, I, I don't judge. Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales Following the events of Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered, teenager Miles is adjusting to his new home while following in the footsteps of his mentor Peter Parker as a new Spider-Man. But when a fierce power struggle threatens to destroy his new home, the hero realizes that with great power comes great electricity bills, or something like that. So to save all of New York, you must take up the mantle of Spider-Man and own it like you stole it, or something like that. Anyway, there are some sweet technical characteristics as well. Unlocked frame rate, new Nvidia graphic technologies, upscaling, ultra-wide monitor support, ray tracing and dual sense controller support with all the tricks you get on PlayStation. The review score is above 90%, so it's a no-brainer for various joyful Spider-Man fans or even for old grumpy dudes who just want to chill and enjoy the views. Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord 
In this open world strategy RPG sandbox, you will create and develop a character that matches your playstyle. Explore, raid, and conquer your way across a vast medieval world where no two playthroughs are the same. You will raise armies, engage in politics, trade, craft weapons, recruit companions, and manage your clan. You will command and fight alongside your troops in first or third person. Participate in huge real time battles using skill based combat system. You can also test your might against players from all over the world in multiplayer PvP, including ranked matchmaking and casual game modes or host your own server. The only downside, according to Steam players, is that the game is very addictive. Just like potato salad, if you start playing there is no way you can simply quit doing that. And yeah, I personally know a dude who played 60 hours of it in just one day. True story bro, I would never lie to you. Death Stranding Director's Cut after the collapse of civilization, you must journey across a ravaged landscape crawling with dangers to save mankind from the brink of extinction. Game is created by legendary Hideo Kojima, so brace yourself for some weirdness. The famous Danish actor Mads Mikkelsen and the Walking Dead hair model Norman Reedus gave their bodies and voices to the characters, so that alone is probably enough to catch your attention. Also, you can actually take a dumpty dump in there. Such nice details. Death Stranding is definitely not a standard game. It really differs from almost everything I have seen. Some salty guys call the game a walking simulator, but you know, in a walking simulator you can't die, and here death is on every corner, it's even in the name of the game. Death Stranding can be too stressful for more sensitive people, so keep in mind that this is not just a happy walk in the park, it's quite dark and gloomy and it will really test your nerves. Batman Arkham Knight Premium Edition here, obviously, you will become Batman. The game comes with the introduction of the Batmobile and enhancements to signature features, such as free flow combat, stealth, forensics, and navigation. The main feature, the Batmobile, is brought to life with an original design featuring a distinct visual appearance and a full range of high tech gadgetry. It is designed to be fully drivable throughout the game world and capable of transformation from high speed pursuit mode to military grade battle mode. The vehicle sits at the heart of the game's design and allows you to to race the streets at high speeds and catch most dangerous villains. Batmobile also augments your abilities in every aspect, from navigation and forensics to combat and puzzle solving. People on Steam are saying that Arkham Knight looks better than most games today and is immensely fun. The reviews are around 90%. The game is great. And now, thank you for watching and don't forget that in my channel you can find hundreds of videos like that with new ones released almost every day. Have a nice day and I'll see you next time. Bye!